Hello everyone. Um, we This is your support video for this week. Um, we went over the assessment report and the Woodcock-Johnson um, this week and also the motivated and motivated and addressing disproportionality. So um, just a reminder about the mindyeti.com which is a great uh, website for kids and also to practice making sure that you're using growth mindset quotes instead of fixed mindset. Um, oh, and Lauren's office hours are Tuesday, this next Tuesday from 3 to 5, and she'll be in Mother Rosalie Hill Hall, 251. So you feel free to come by if you want any help with your critical reflection, APA writing, or anything else. You want to do this? Sure. Uh, hi, everybody. So we did go over the critical reflection in our courses with you guys on Thursday. Um, the first part of it that you're going to be doing is adding on to your case study assessment report um, with a, it's called a CRSTP. What does that stand for, Jess? It's a culturally responsive student transition portfolio. And um, here's some examples of it um, where, you know, this is different people have done these. You can see. Uh, there is, she was saying that there's no um, ability or learning challenges, um, but we know that every, I have ability and learning challenges, so, um, but it, however you do it, uh, you can ask the kid, you can help them look at their, um, their uh, reports possibly if it's appropriate. Um, here's another example from elementary. And you can see on this one, you probably needed to um, move it into two different slides, and that's okay to do. Like you, like we said in class, you can um, change it to whatever works for you. Here's another one. This is for an older student, and just went through resources. So who helps you when you grow up? This is just kind of goals, academic abilities, and um, you can see there's pictures on there. So it's a lot of. Um, little ways that you can do this and make it fun and make sure that it really represents uh, what that represents the student. So a lot of times these are used in the IEP. The student might um, the student might actually uh, create this document. So um, and here's the ADA services, which you know that's a really important thing for students with disabilities to actually know about um, what do they need to do when they um, leave high school. So, and, and at the bottom of that slide is where you find out that out. So, helpful modifications, overcoming adversity, staying connected, and then these are all the goals. So, you can see that it, uh, people did it in different ways, and then this person also had a reflection there at the end. Uh, here's the middle school one, and this one's just more, it's the information. So, it's whatever you are able to do. Are you still with me? I heard the... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and then I came back in. No worries. All right. Um, so I just finished the CRSTP. Don't forget to write the narrative, so no more than two paragraphs, about what you learn um, through the CRSTP process. Um, also, so that's part one. Part two, we'd like you to explain mean and standard deviation to a parent using a visual and making sure to cite your references and, and include the visual so we can see it in your paper. I had a lot of questions about this one in class um, about do they literally pretend they're talking to a parent in their language. Um, so, yes. So, you would, you I, would, you, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, yeah, that's what I told them to pretend they were talking to a parent and to... Um, we did look at some other ones besides this. We Google searched some, and they were supposed to go through them and either use this one or another one that they want and make sure they include it on question number two and then put specifically the language and language that a parent could understand. So if you're talking about, oh, their percentile was in this, this, or the standard deviation is um, minus two, well, what does that mean? Mm -hmm. um, so it's it kind of the defining the standard deviation. And then in the parentheses is where you put the reference. 
uh, so that you make sure that you're still referencing how, where you got this information, aka the book and <laughs> the PowerPoint. But um, yeah, you, it should be in, in uh, parent-friendly language. That doesn't mean that you don't use the word standard deviation. You can still use technical terms, but then explain what they are. So, perfect. And they were saying if they used a different visual, um, how do they uh, reference that? That was a question I have got several times. Oh, so I'm going to pause the video and then I will add that. So this is how you cite an online image with APA. So you actually put, if you know who it is, then you can put the artist's last name, first initial, second initial if they have it, the year, the title of the artwork, the format, so um, if you have that, and then retrieved from the URL. If you don't have the author, then you could just put the title of the work, the type of work, the year it was created, and where you um, retrieve it. If you have no author, no title, and no date, then you can just put the subject and type of work, and then the uh, retrieved from, and then you put the www dot and all of that. Um, so that's where, that's how you would cite it. Thank you for that question. All right, and then the last one is just how are you feeling about the Woodcock Johnson for administration? Do you need any additional support? And this is really around, you know, um, I, you should be getting used to more of the basal and sealing rules and, you know, what kind of notes to take on the protocol. All of those pieces should be starting to come together for you. But if you need more support, then we're, you know, we're, we're here to help you and make sure that you get it either whole class or um, with our individual um, office hours or if you email us uh, and request time, that as well. So. And could you, um, mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Jess, could you go over, because I did have a lot of questions on if their school, if they're not going to be doing the Woodcock Johnson, they were asking, yeah. do they do it or scores? Which scores do they use? So one of the things that we gave you this week also was the template for the assessment report. And you can see here either disability or SST results. And then you go through and you talk about which norm reference formal assessment. So here, so say you were doing the Kaufman, um, I forget what the T stands for, um, KTEA -E um, assessment, but you would spell it all out, is an assessment uh, or a norm reference assessment, sorry. assessment and then you're going to talk about who it's normed for and also um, what it assesses but that would be fine you would put that there and then um, you know all the work samples you, this is who you um, assess so the family interview you can just put mother interviewed um, student interviewed using the culturally responsive student um, transition portfolio um, the classroom subject date time um, I can put that in there culturally, just in case you forget. Culturally responsive. Ah, sorry about that. Uh, student transition portfolio. Okay, um, and then you would just write the, like write that part, and then the student's um, pseudonym and the date that you interviewed them, or dates. Um, and then the hearing, if they have any other health concerns, and then you'll put the educational history and all of those pieces. So then this is where you would change it. So if you, if the school for this student is using the um, KTEA, for example, then you would put that right here, and then you would create, a t you can actually change this table, you would just need to change the subtest, but we still need the standard score in either age or grade, the percentile rank should come out, and then also the classification or interpretation, which we can help you with once we know which assessment that you're using and exactly um, what the assessment report looks like. So you can just replace these two um, graphs for that. For the criterion reference, it's either the Brigantz or another criterion reference assessment. So if you have a question about, you know, uh, an assessment, you can just email us and we'll let you know, yes, that's criterion reference, or no, that wouldn't count. So that's just fine. And then you would, um, you depending on which one it was, um, you would actually put um, the scores in there. And so it doesn't have to look like this. This is just a one sample of a table. 
Um, and then you're going to be putting in work samples and your qualitative observations, strengths, areas of growth, suggested IEP goals, progress monitoring plan, collaboration plan, and then also your reflection. So all of those pieces will come out. I actually went through and I wanted to give you um, some examples so that you could see what these the final product looks like. And so here's one. Um, uh, the formatting is a little off because I can tell that this is um, the examiner, for example. All of the, he the headings are in Arial instead of Times New Roman, but everything should be in Times New Roman. That's APA. But you can see that they have the educational history, the interview, and they've just kind of summarized it, the classroom observations. They've got the Woodcock Johnson scores here. This should actually say age or grade, so you have to erase one of them. Um, and then, oh, that was the Brigantz. Here's the Brigantz scores. And the work sample with the photo. So what's the reasoning? What are the directions? And then the you can see the strengths, and you have to put data in there. Um, here's the areas of growth, and you also have to put data from the assessments. Suggested IEP goals, progress monitoring, the collaboration plan, and then here's the reflection. So that's just one example. I'll show you another example from a different age level. But you can see we've got all of the different um, CELT scores because we used to have CELT scores instead. Um, and once again, all of the different parts. So it ends up you know, here, Woodcock Johnson. Um, here's the RAT. So they used it, the RAT as their criterion reference assessment. And then the work samples. Here's the pictures of the work samples, the reasoning, directions. Um, and then, like I said, it just keeps going on. And they've, they've brought together the RAT and the Woodcock Johnson scores in order to identify the areas of growth. So, and also the, um, observation data. So you can see that it starts building on it, on itself all the way through to the reflection. So those are just some actual examples. So we don't need that. We're going here. So um, hopefully that's helpful. Did that kind of answer the question? I'm not sure if, she, if she's still here, but, but yeah. So um, anyway, then just remembering that if we um, we as educators are knowledgeable about IDEA and RTI and what research is telling us for evidence-based practices that we will, um, that, that we should be able to reduce the number of disproportionality um, of certain groups in special ed. We need to work with the students and we need to work with families. Um, and then we, we have to make sure that the tests are culturally responsive and that everybody's trained um, and maybe if we need at different schools, possibly working um, with a, a liaison to make sure that we are being culturally sensitive. Uh, then we jumped into the Woodcock Johnson. Um, I'm not sure if Christy's here with me anymore, but um, anyway, I will just go through. So, um, oh, you are here. Okay. <laughs> so we talked about, uh, we were talking before. Yeah. Oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, it's kind of, there's a little bit of a delay, and it cuts out here and there, so I'm still listening. Oh, okay, yeah, because I'm hearing a delay on your side, so I wasn't sure if you were here, but um, anyway, so the basal and ceiling um, is what we were looking at, making sure we're timing things and writing qualitative and um, notes about strengths and areas of growth for the student, that we write the date and the time that we're assessing, um, and yeah. Uh, so we got up to test number seven in both classes, and um, it looks like you guys are on test four in Talbot's class, and so we'll just be kind of moving along through this assessment, but next week, oh, that's the other thing I have, is just kind of what the expectations are for next week, which is um, to, we're going to talk a little bit about reliability, validity, and stress reduction, and clear communication. And then the rest of it will be about um, administering the Woodcock Johnson. So um, let's just see if there's anything else. Uh, and then, and then my just class onto your room. Yes, and uh, Professor Talbot's class will be in 127 for the seven o'clock or the 440 class. 
um, will be in 127 and we'll all be there together uh, working on um, these different things. So you'll be doing the reliability and also the curriculum based assessments, um, chapters, and then the critical reflection number four where you will upload two documents, the CRSTP and then also your written critical reflection. So can you think of anything else we've forgotten? I don't think so. I think we hit all, like, all the questions. Okay, perfect. Um, and if you do have any other questions, please let us know. We're here to help. All right, bye-bye.